What we're going to be looking at here is a zero interest bearing note with imputed interest and with rights. And for example, here on 1120X1, uh, this new Corporation A borrows and receives $500,000 in cash here from Corporation B, one of their customers here, by exchanging a zero interest bearing note due in three years. And for consideration of the zero interest on this note here, Corporation A agrees to supply Corporation B with a new product which they manufacture here. That is Corporation A is the manufacturer and they're supplying it to Corporation B. And over the three year period at the uh, this, where this note is outstanding here, they're going to offer Corporation or Corporation A is going to offer Corporation B a lower than market price here on this uh, product that they're supplying to them. And the imputed interest rate for the note is estimated at 10%. So there's no stated interest rate here on the note uh, because it's a zero interest bearing note, but there's an imputed rate here on a note of 10% uh, interest rate. So what Corporation A is doing uh, they're getting this cash from Corporation B here, this $500,000 in cash, and Corporation B is lending it to them. And what they're saying here is, uh, we'll lend you to $500,000 providing you uh, 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 sell us this new product that you're making or this product that we're buying from you here at a lower than market price. So uh, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to determine the present value of this note here when we're dealing with these uh, notes and we have to uh, record them here on our balance sheet. We have to determine what the present value is here. So the present value of cash on a note in this case equals the future value or the payback value. So what Corporation A is doing here, they're receiving $500,000 here on 1, 1, uh, 20X1 or the first year here, and they're going to pay back $500,000 here uh, three years later on 1231 year 20X3 here. So what we have to do is we're Corporation A is going to receive their fair value here on 1120X1 of $500,000. And that's broken down um, in this fashion here. So the present value of this notes payable that they're going to have to pay back here um, is $500,000. And they're going to pay it back here three years later. Now, we know what the imputed rate of interest is on this note. So had they just uh, issued, had Corporation A just issued this note here to Corporation B for no, uh, to, for no other purposes than, than to get cash here and they were going to pay uh, the normal interest rate, they would have received only, in this case, $375,657 here. So, and that's really the present value of this uh, note here discounted back or the, uh, the what we're going to the maturity value of this note or the face amount on this note discounted back here three years at that imputed interest rate here of 10 percent. Now because the present value here that they're receiving is $500,000 and we know what the present value of the note discounted just based on the interest rate alone here of $375,657. So the difference we have to account here between the uh, fair value of the present value of $500,000 and the present value of the note based just on the interest rate alone here. And that difference here is going to go to a balance uh, of unearned revenue. That's the sales that they're going to generate uh, due to this note that they're issuing and the discounted price on that uh, note or discounted interest rate here on that note. And the difference here would be $124,343. Simply the difference between the $375,000 $375, here and the $500,000 uh, face value of that note here. So what we have to do is we have to amortize this interest expense here on this note and also the sales revenue here over the three-year life of the note. So let's go down and look at what we're going to do here. So uh, what we're going to uh, first deal with here is this interest expense on this notes payable. So we, we went through that already here, but the face value on this zero interest bearing note here is $500,000 here. So what we would do to determine what its present value is, and we already talked about that here. So we take the principal amount here of $500,000, discount it back here. Uh, 10% uh, interest rate over a three-year period here and I've just you can plug it into your financial calculator or whatever and I'm using the uh, Excel function here and if we discount it back here the maturity value here three years back here at a 10% interest rate it's worth $375,657 as we 
uh, mentioned above here. So taking that here from the uh, difference between our face val our value of the note here, that zero interest bearing note of 500000 and its present value here, we're going to come up with the discount on, note, on this note payable here of $124,343. So this we're looking at it in terms of Corporation A here. They're going to have this notes payable. And this is the discount amount. And this is what we have to amortize as our interest expense. And I'm just going to use this effective interest method here for amortizing. So very simple here. All we do is we start out with that balance of our note here at $375,658. That is that discounted amount of the maturity value back here at the beginning or the issue date of this note. And we just have to amortize it up to the face value of the note here, $500,000. So all we do is take the starting balance here, $375,658 times the imputed interest rate or this effective interest rate here of 10%. We're going to get an interest expense here of $37,566. So we don't have any uh, interest payments on this note here. So all that, and it's a, because it's a zero interest bearing note, so all we have to do is amortize. This is our interest expense for the first period here. So what we would do for the next period here is we just add this interest expense here of 37566 the beginning balance here of 375000 plus here, and we're going to come up with the new balance here of 413224 Just take that times the uh, imputed interest rate of 10% and that gives us our new interest expense here for the next period or the next year here 41322 and then just add that to the beginning balance you get your new balance here and then you just take that times the interest rate so what we've done here is we're going to amortize this uh, total amount of interest here was what we're going to uh, amortize on this note even though we're not paying any interest payment but we have to amortize it uh, based on that uh, imputed interest rate of 8% because that's what it would be worth here if we had to uh, borrow the uh, cash here on the open market or from somebody else here. So uh, total interest here on the note would be $124,343 and when we amortize it up to its maturity value here of $500,000. So now let's go up and look at how we'd record this here on our balance sheet and on our income statement. So recording this zero interest bearing note here that we exchanged with our customer here, Corporation A exchanged with the Corporation B uh, for those sales here. So we're going to have to do, deal with our interest expense here that we've amortized here based on the imputed interest rate and also the unearned revenue because it had we, when we issued this note we were offered sales here. We could make a sale here to um, the customer or Corporation B or Corporation A could make the sale here to Corporation B. So we're going to look at it from Corporation A's um, balance sheet here and income statement. So what I've gotten shown here is just the asset accounts here, our balance sheet, our uh, liability accounts here, and then the income statement accounts here. So at the issuance of this uh, note here, the zero interest bearing note, uh, we have the um, records and notes payable, liability on our balance sheet of $500,000. Now, what we have received here, we're, we're going to have to set up, we're going to have to set up a discount to this notes uh, payable here because we had this interest rate here that we had to calculate, this imputed interest rate. And we're also going to have an unearned revenue account here that we have to account for both as uh, the discount here is a contra account to our notes payable and the unearned revenue here is going to be a liability account. And that's going to be the sales due to this notes payable that we're going to get here. And then we're going to have this cash account, the cash that we received here. So we talked about the notes payable that were recorded here on 1120X1 when they were, uh, the note was issued here uh, to cor from Corporation A to Corporation B here. So we credit that here for $500,000. And then we have this discount here because that's what we had to amortize on that this interest expense here. It's a contract account to our notes payable and that we come off our amortization chart here. 120, well that we calculated, that was the difference here between the um, present value of the note here and its maturity or face value. And that we would debit here for 124300 of $43. So we got a credit here of $500,000, debit here of $124,343. So uh, our 
a, a debit amount here of 124343 and then going back to our cash account, our asset account, this is what we're going to actually receive here in cash. We're going to receive 500000 in cash here. So we would debit or increase our cash account here for $500,000. But that's broken down here uh, due to the uh, discount on that note. That uh, note is present value here is $375,657. Let's look at it here. And then that sales revenue that we're going to generate, we have to amortize that as well here. So the cash here would be to uh, sales revenue that we're going to have here in the future here of 124343 And that is simply the difference here. That sort of total amount here that we're receiving in cash is 500000 broken up between the present value of that note discounted back at the imputed interest rate and then the sales revenue that we're going to calculate here. And that and the sales revenue, just remember, would have been the present value of the note here uh, in the difference between the present value of the note here and the total cash received. So moving down here, well, we looked at our discount on our notes uh, payable here, that debit amount, $124,000 here. But we also have this unearned revenue here as a liability account here due to the sales that we generated through this notes payable. So what we would do is we would credit that here uh, that's a liability for $124,343. I was a calculation that we made here. So if we look at all our debits and credits here, you're going to see a credit here in our unearned revenue of $124,343. And then if we move up here to our notes payable, you're going to see also a credit amount here of $500,000. And that balances uh, with our debits here and our discount to our notes payable, 124343 and uh, our debit amount here to cash of $500,000. Just to point it out here. Okay, so as time rolls on here, each year here we're going to reduce our discount to notes payable and that comes off our amortization here, that interest expense. You can see the numbers here, 37566 for the first year. So we credit or reduce our discount on that notes payable here. And then moving over to our income statement, we recognize an interest expense. That's on the notes payable and I got it. I said stated rate of interest here. There's not, but that's the imputed rate of interest here. So we debit that here for 37566 and then for each of the next years here you enter your, your interest expense that you would reduce your discount to notes payable here and then recognizes as interest expense here for each of the next end of each of the next three years and then for our unearned revenue account here uh, remember that's a liability account here on our balance sheet we would reduce that each year here and I'm just using the straight line method let's just say gen sales were generated at a even amount each year here over the three-year period. So we have this sales revenue that is being generated here of 124,343 divided by three years here. Um, so each of the years you would rec reduce your unearned revenue here by, um, in this case, $41,447. Straight line method here for amortizing that total sales revenue that would be generated here. Of, $124,343. So you debit or reduce your unearned revenue here and then you go over to your income statement here and you'd recognize that sales revenue here. Credit that here for that amount, $41,447 each of the years here. So what we've done here, if you look at it, when you look at our interest expense here, and I, I don't get confused with the stated rate of interest here. I mean the imputed rate of interest here of 10%. So if you look at your total interest expense here, a debit amount here, that total debit amount here of interest expense over those three years, and you look at your total sales revenue here over those three years, your credit amount here and your sales revenue, and you're going to see they net each other out here. This interest expense here and the sales revenue. So the net amount, they're going to net each other out here when it comes to your income statement. But nonetheless here, remember when you're dealing with this, uh, these zero interest bearing notes, you have to come up with some type of interest expense. In this case, we imputed an interest rate here. And then because we were actually receiving the same amount of cash here in the beginning uh, as we're going to in the beginning when this note was issued here with the amount of cash that we're going to have to pay out at the end here. Um, 
we had to come up with uh, the difference coming into uh, the balance hat we, we knew it was going some was going into our interest expense here but the other amount had to go into an unearned revenue here because by issuing this notes payable uh, corporation A issued the notes payable to corporation B uh, they were generating more sales here so that was what we had to show here so not to confuse everything here but um, just to note here what was going on here with this zero interest bearing note here where you were receiving the same amount of cash in the beginning here as you were having to pay out when the note became due here so all right so that takes care of this zero interest bearing note where we have to deal with our interest expense here and also this unearned revenue